I sacrificed a lot. I missed out a lot, but I didn't really miss out because I lived that life already. Yes, sir. For me, it's always fit over pick. I really don't care what pick you are. I mean, I just think LeBron's antlers is in platinum and Michael's may be in gold. Nobody's really building a signature shoe business that hasn't already built it. I ain't ducking no smoke. I stood in the fire with Ben Simmons. I stood right there. This is one for the age. <laughs> Welcome back to Gills Arena, presented by Underdog Fantasy. Whoa, whoa! whoa. <laughs> uh, we got our crowd here back with the living legend, Gilbert Arenas. We got yeah. Brandon James, Rashad McCants. We got Kenya Martin pulling back up to the couch. Wow. But we got a very special guest making his first appearance in the arena. Founder and CEO of Clutch Sports Group. Represents some of the biggest names in the game. Negotiated billions of dollars in deals on the basketball side. Y'all also taking over football and other sports as well. And he's got his book dropping soon called Lucky Me, which is a memoir. Rich Paul, we appreciate you pulling up to Gills Arena. Oh, uh, man, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you. So we got plenty of things we need to discuss, but before we get into all that, as always, show's brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. If you have not done so already, download the app, use promo code Gills Arena. They will match your first deposit up to $100. And if you can't watch the show live with us, get it on Spotify, get it on Apple, wherever you get your podcast from. So let's get right into this, man. You had a productive summer. I'm just going to read off some of the deals that you've negotiated. Uh, Jeremy Grant, five-year, 160. Fred Van Fleet, three-year, 130 with the Rockets. Largest deal for an undrafted player in NBA history. DeJounte Murray, four for 120 with the Hawks. Draymond, four for 100 with the Warriors. Jordan Clarkson, three for 55. And Anthony Davis, three for 186, which is puts him at the largest annual average salary per year. Did I get that yeah, all correct? Yeah. So after uh, you did all that, like... Damn, I want to play yeah. here. <laughs> Gil, get your ass back in the game. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> So first day of free agency, LeBron dropped this tweet after you got the uh, Grant, FEV, and Draymond deals. He said, and y'all still want to question this Rich Paul him. It says a lot about you if you're not feeling us. I told him less is more, it's plenty of us. So when you look at this offseason, where does this offseason rank in your career? Oh, man, I mean, I think numbers speak for itself, you know. <laughs> I think, but, you know, it's like there, there's, a, there's, there's a few in there that's missing, you know, but... I think this summer the most, the most impactful deal I probably did this summer was probably Chris Livingston, you know? He was the 58th pick in the draft and he got guaranteed money. That's seven million? That, he got, yeah, I mean, he got a four-year deal, but, you know, obviously <clears throat> he got a first-round structure on the guaranteed money, which is unheard of, you know? B.J. Boston was 51, was the highest-paid player ever to, at 51 to get guaranteed money at that number, and then to come back with, with Chris. And it was, it's because I think people underestimate the importance of a start for these young guys, right? And so the way that the game is now, and the way the league is structured now, we add another two-way player to, to, to rosters. It's hard. It's hard to stay um, contracted to a team from a guaranteed perspective, you know? And you're creating this environment where you're going to have the half and half not. So to be able to get that young man an opportunity in which he, you know, he had a rough road. Top player, McDonald's All-American, all those things. And then you go to school and it don't work the way you thought it would because obviously it's, it's not in your control, mm -hmm. right? And so I thought up there with all those other numbers, not to discredit any of them because obviously they're unbelievable. But that one was, for me... And, and how I look at things, that one was just as big as, as any of them. Sure, we heard Austin Reeves tell this story about, I think, how the Pistons wanted to draft him. His people said, nah, he's going to roll with the Lakers. I'd rather go and draft him. So teams calling you, telling you they want to draft Chris. Like, how hard is that conversation for you to be like, nah, don't, don't even fuck with him because we, we know where we're going? You know, I actually was calling them. Like, just don't even. <laughs> yeah, because I had already had an understanding. It was about, for me, it's always fit over pick. I really don't care what pick you are. I mean, we got lottery picks in the building, second round pick in the building. Um, but for me, it's just being able to see past a commission or an ability to go to the next draft pick per se and say, look what I did. It's more so being able to position these guys to where you have what I would say growth opportunity. So. As I'm looking at the situation with the Bucks, I'm looking at a kid 6'7", 220, right? Knows how to play in terms of talent, 
needs to learn how to play in terms of NBA, but you need time. So when you look at their ownership group, Jimmy Haslam, new owner with Wes Edens, okay, they're not going anywhere. When you look at their front office, John Horace, championship front office. When you look at their vets, Jeru, um, um, Giannis, and Chris Middleton, all great guys. So when you place a kid in that environment, right, less becomes more for him to be successful. And if you give him the, the information to where he understands the environment I'm going into and what I need to do and what my role needs to be, now you go from having two years guaranteed, getting that third year guaranteed, and as you know, you just need bad attempts. Mm -hmm. Can't hit a home run without that, mm -hmm. or single, or double, or triple. So allowing him to have that without the pressure, because if you go eight, now you got to show and prove. You know, mm -hmm. so sometimes it's not all about the, the pick. And so I, I like to evaluate that for guys situational. <clears throat> Prior to that, I did the same thing for Marjan Bochamp the year before. Mm -hmm. You know, but you have to be open-minded to it. And you got to remember, most families, they want to go the highest because the finances is, is, is aligned with it. But yeah, but if we get a little bit for this long and nothing else for this long, then we back to square one. Absolutely. But if we get a little bit for this long and then a lot for this long, we further down the road. And so that's my mentality going into it. And for me, it's not like, I mean, I can't get fired. So <laughs> not, I can't fire myself, number one. And then if you don't have the, the willingness to listen and be open-minded <clears throat> to the strategy that you are, because you're only picking me as your representation because you want to be not just challenged, but because it's not just about that, but you want to be represented holistically. It's not an ego stroke. It's not a, I'm going to be Johnny on the spot. It's not, I'm going to call you 100 times a day. Because if I call you 100 times a day, but you haven't learned nothing, then what, then what I'm, you know, it doesn't make sense. And so I just look at it from a different perspective. And I know you four guys that play in the league would appreciate that today because you, because you didn't have that. Let's just call it what it was. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> you did. Yeah. That was gonna be my follow-up. That was gonna be my follow-up. So, that how was gonna be you, my follow up. so that was um, so you answered my question. So how do you, if a player is hell bent on that number, like I don't want to go, if I want to go two, then I want to go two. Damn, what you talking about? How do you, like, how do you well, convince that? The, the thing, the way the draft works, if you're slotted at two, yeah, then. If you drop to six, that team that picking six, that's not a drop to them. They happy to get you, yeah. right? Yeah. But if you slot it at 35, yeah. that team that's picking 18 is not taking you. True. Mm -hmm. you, you understand True. what I'm saying? Yeah, so absolutely. the math is the math. We don't yeah. have to sit here and, and yeah, pretend. Right? Yeah. It's not playing fantasy draft. Absolutely. But that's up to you. Yeah. If, if you have, which everyone thinks they have, but the reality of it is very little people do. If you have superstar qualities, now what that number two entails is a different dynamic. We got to look at market, yep. right? Now, some people are market busters. Mm -hmm. yep. Very few, though, yep. right? Yeah, absolutely. I think you could have put Steph. If Steph goes in Minnesota, you know, he, it, maybe they don't win depending on, you know, go, obviously Golden State has had... But his impact on the game, how he plays the game, kids thinking they can walk outside and go into a gym and throw the ball 40 feet. Absolutely. You're Steph Curry. Yeah. You know, you, we cannot deny that. Absolutely. LeBron was able to be a market buster in Cleveland. He turned Cleveland into Midwest Hollywood. Everyone from Warren Buffett to Jay-Z to Little Wayne, everybody came to games in Cleveland. Yeah. Not waiting on them to get to New York or L.A., they came to Cleveland. There's very few guys like that, mm -hmm. right? And so now, but if you have those capabilities, then let's talk about that. Yeah. Because, okay, so you're telling me if OKC got two, but Chicago got three? If we're talking business, Absolutely. if we're not talking business, then let's not talk it. But I'm just saying, yeah. and that's no slight to OKC, but it's just facts. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Right? No, and so, yeah. my, my thing is, I give you a prime example. Yeah. This is one for the ages. <clears throat> this, and, and this guy I really thank because if it don't be for him and the this situation, I probably don't start my own business. 
But let's just take Michael Kidd Gilchrist, for example. He went number two. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, he went two to Charlotte. There's an expectation on him. Absolutely. In reality, he's a role player yep. at best, mm -hmm. right? So my advice, and I'm talking to Mark Jackson at the time, who was the coach at Golden State, my number one choice was Golden State. Why? Because if you go back to the season, most of his points were scored in transition. Yep. Mm -hmm. So now if you put him next to Clay and Steph, there's no highlight on the fact that he don't shoot the ball that well because we're not asking him to shoot it. Yep. Mm -hmm. We're asking him to guard the best player every night, get out in transition, get easy baskets. That's it. Absolutely. Right? My second choice for him was Cleveland. Why? Because he played in high school with, with Kyrie. Kind of similar to the same thing. It's, not, it's going to be less pressure on him. But once he goes number two, now, especially coming behind AD, who is on the Olympic team as a rookie, mm -hmm. rookie of the year, he yeah, got 38 be. and 12 this night. And, you know, it's like, but I can't make the decision. I can't want him to go number two just for me to go into somebody else's living room and say I had the number two pick last year. Yep. That means absolutely nothing to me it's, as an agent. Yeah, it just yeah. don't mean nothing, right? And absolutely. so, but from a longevity perspective, where would, you know, we just never know. And by the way, now his value is different to that team. Yep. Right? Because yeah. that you getting to stop when it matters, Clay or Steph coming down, hitting the game, winning three, they going to the Western Conference Finals. Now instead of making 52, maybe you make 82. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Draymond did it. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I'm looking at it from that perspective, yeah. just to give you an example. I got you. Right? Got so you. let me follow up with that. Um, in our time, you know. Yeah. 06, 07, 08, 09, put yourself where you are now in that time. I wish. You know what I'm saying? So I wish. Even the money ain't as big, but you know the talent was there. You, you understand market now. Like, where, like, because for a player like me, then, you know, I had Jeff, uh, Jeff Swartz, and. Who's a good agent? Solid. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it wasn't <laughs> solid. <laughs> but as our relationship, we, like, I know you, and I know you know the players, and mm -hmm. how, you know, Brian was able to put you around guys who can consider you a familiar face, right. trustworthy. You know what I'm saying? You know the player. So put yourself there. Like, where do you see the success rate with you being able to negotiate certain deals for players who you know have the value but never got that fit? I think I, think I, would, have been I, think I would have been extremely successful, and let me tell you why. Back then, I was able to be with Gil. Brown's in Vancouver. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm with Gilbert in D.C., mm -hmm. right? I got Gilbert's car. He ain't even landed yet. <laughs> they coming back from Detroit. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? I did the same thing with Rip. I did, we had this, this uncanny ability to relate to guys, and Gilbert, trust me. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yo, Rich, you need a code? Boom. I'll be there, I'll be there at 4 o'clock, whatever. That's how the relationship was. So now when you fast forward that, to a business relationship, and I'm saying to you, yo, shot, we doing this, this, and this, and here's why. Th that never happened. Yep. Because you got to remember, back in those days, information was not accessible. Yep. So now information is being withheld because the more information I withhold, the more you feel like you need me. And so that value is being fictitiously created, yep. right? Mm -hmm. but, but here's the other thing. It's really no value because you're not welcoming me into your home. Mm -hmm. You're not welcoming me into circles in which you feel like I'm just an athlete and I'm just a commission for you. So now I'm tolerated. I'm not really celebrated Absolutely. upon my arrival. Yep. It's a different dynamic. I can't do you like that because we cut from the same cloth. It's, it may not be the entire cloth, but out of this cloth, there's gonna be a piece that me and you can both share 100%. through experience, right? Yep. So now our relationship sits on the foundation of respect and integrity, first and foremost. Mm. Mm. Can't sugarcoat that. Never. Money don't even matter at that point. 
right? And so now you're going to value that and appreciate that and you're going to do even more for that. Today, our business is being so watered down and these companies are saturating the business because they're playing a numbers game. And so they're feeding on the ego in which the AAU ecosystem has created to where if you play for me, I'm going to pay for your travel, I'm going to give you this iPad, I'm going to give you these shoes, etc. And so now you create this mindset that the more you do for me, you're doing more for me because I'm this guy. Yeah. So now I equate that to business. Oh, well, if you come with me, I'm only going to charge you 1%. <laughs> or I'm going to charge you 2% or whatever the case may be. Right? This is the dynamic that you're dealing with. But it doesn't allow, the, the athlete doesn't say to themselves, well, wait a minute. you only going to... Like, they, they're saying, I'm that special that you only want to charge me yeah. X, Y, yeah. Z. This is what goes into it. Mm -hmm. So that becomes a thing. So now your nourishment is this ego that you're eating, right? That's what you're eating. There's no substance in none of that. But yet and still, you go down Rodeo, you walk into a Miri, you walk into Louis, yep. you walk into Chanel, you walk into Van Cleef, and you pay top dollar. So you mean to tell me you will take less for the work practice of somebody that you put in, you will pay less for the work expertise of somebody that you put in your business portfolio in the hands of, yep. but pay more for materialistic thing that back has no back. value that's going to depreciate as soon as you walk out the door. It's backwards. This is our business yep. today. Yep. And it's even worse when you look like me. Because the one thing that we can't get out in front of or get out of the way of is the envy yes. of one another. Yes. It's see, that's embedded. The trust. Right? Rich. That's embedded. Everybody that has a guy or two guys <clears throat> may feel like it's, it's, it's going to be 50-50. And then y'all know me. Yep. I've been the same person mm -hmm. no matter what, up or down. But yet not one ever picks up the phone and says... Hey, man, how did you do this? Help me understand. Because the thing is, when people talk about, and we, screw, we, we messed the whole thing up. Right. Because it looks easy. <clears throat> yeah. Right? Absolutely. You've Absolutely. had guys on your payroll. <clears throat> you've had guys on your payroll. You've had guys on your payroll. And you've had guys on your payroll. Right? And that's, I'm all for opportunity. Right? I was given an opportunity. But I wasn't given an opportunity out of entitlement. I was given an opportunity out of capabilities placed, behavior patterns yes. consistent across the board being exuded to the point to where, okay, this makes sense. And the, when given an opportunity, the best, the best value I could bring to the table when I didn't know what I know today was to find somebody that knew more than I knew to where we didn't make these mistakes. It wasn't like, you know, I was off LeBron's payroll in 2006. Yeah. He came to the league in 03, 04. That means two years of payroll. Mm. I'm making 48000 a year. Yeah. I played Boo A with you <laughs> with 48,000 in front of you. Yeah, that's so, straight up. So, I'm just saying. Straight up. So if you, if you put two, two and two together, mm -hmm. it was never about that, bro. Yep. And so when I look at it today and where the, our business is going, it's tough for the athlete. We all have survivor's remorse. I got it. Y'all have it. And, you know, but the entitlement of something times or you know, align with the capabilities of something else. The worst thing you can do around any one of y'all is take the opportunity for granted by not having the capabilities. Yes, sir. You have to be committed. You have to miss out. Hmm. I sacrificed a lot. I missed out a lot. But I didn't really miss out because I lived that life already. Yes, sir. Been there. You feel what I'm saying? I've been there already. Y'all all know that. I've been there already. That's a so, so at the end of the day, when I think about my positioning, once again, people come in my office all the time. No one never 
thinks or asks a question about how can I have an entry point to positioning? Because you can make money for five years and be broke for the next 35. Hell yeah. Right? But if you're in position, I don't worry about money today. <laughs> I could lose it all. Hmm. But I'm in position. Value. I can get it back. Value. Lost 92. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, simple math. A1 credit. So when I'm trying to, you know, in my position, like, and I say this in a way because I'm not really an emotional guy like that, the hurt of it comes from the fact that if this was David Falk, he have a line down the street. Man. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Real shit. When it was Arn, he was powerful. And Arn was a really great agent. When it's Rich Paul, he's a bully. Or, oh, you come over here, you could be the next Rich Paul. We, we could, you could do the same thing. The house and the field. Mm. What are we doing? Mm. Talk about it. <laughs> the house and the field, they don't get it. It's over their head, man. What are we doing? Mm. Like, if that's what you want to do, and because I'm not, I'm not going to be for everybody, right? Did Dante Murray will tell you, he just put out a thing on his Instagram. We have a relationship where we hold each other accountable. But just to be able to stand in the rain and enjoy the sun together, sure. I'm in the rain with you. I ain't ducking no smoke. I, stand, I stood in the fire with Ben Simmons. I stood right there in front of him, by the way. Put my, bus put my business at risk. But if I can stand with him when, he, when his name is called number one, I got to stand with him then. Real shit. Absolutely. You feel what I'm saying? That's what we signed up for. When I look at when I came in, ain't nobody pulled my coat, not from an agent perspective. Right, right. You know, they didn't. But if you ask anybody today, the young agents today, when they see me and we have a conversation, I'm giving it to them. Yeah. I'm giving it to them. Straight up. Because... The way I think about it is, man, my daughter may have a child with somebody that, you know, like the seed, that all, it all comes back around. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to, you know, if we're going to give it, give it. We're going to educate, let's educate it, mm -hmm. you know? But don't, don't fake it. Don't see me and smile and then behind my back you telling the family this or you, you know, you're trying to drive a wedge. You know, this is what, this is what the industry is and I don't come from that. Right. Because I come from a world where there's consequences. Our industry don't really, don't really have that. So now I'm like the blue elephant because I don't know, you know, I get discombobulated <laughs> with that type of, you know, behavior going on. So, and that's why I, I started going on the record. No agent was going on the record. I started going on the record because... All this anonymous, man, ain't nothing about anonymous. If you yeah. said it, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, this is what it is. That's sabotage. Ain't no shit. going on, ain't no anonymous, no, what? That don't read. Anonymous don't read. Yeah. If you got something to say, mm -hmm. say it, you know. Say it. That's what happens. And nice. so I'm just bringing a different energy to it. And the thing is, being at the CEO level is unheard of, right? But I got two titles. Yeah, CEO, I get all that. But what I really am, you know, I'm the chief client services officer. You feel what I'm saying? Talk to I'm CCSO, me. always. Because if you're going to be an agent, the foundation of that is client services. Services. I carry the shoes, the gym bag. Yo, you got to shoot around, Gil. Okay, I'm going. They're in the trunk. I don't represent Gil, but that's my man. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Like, there's, 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 there's not enough pride in the world for me, right? So it's just, if you're going to do it, it's 40, I don't know how many agents it is. It's too many, right? right? As it <laughs> pertains to players. And then there's people that define the business card, and there's people that the business card defines them. So, um... You know, my approach is just different, and I understand every, every, every player and every family is not going to be for because the industry's tainted. Yeah. So when I get to the meeting, my conversation's not that sexy, right? <laughs> it may be nourishing, mm. but not sexy. Right. 
but the results as a kid, you like Kool-Aid. You don't really like to drink water like that. <laughs> you know but as you get older, you realize how much you need the water. So it's just, that's just my mentality, man, and it's not going to change, and it's not going to change from a place of no commission, you know. Um, you know, we've all, you know, as in this industry, you, you know, you, you get players, you lose players, but I don't ever feel like I lost a player, you know. I just feel like we didn't, we wasn't on the same wavelength as it pertains to, because I care. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I care about the wires hanging from your TV. I care about what, what, what table you, you have in the restaurant. I care about your business portfolio. I, you know, I care about how you treat others. Yep. That matters. Yep. Mm -hmm. Representation. What about the people that surround your players? Like when you sign players, right? Like they're boys. Mm -hmm. Like the ones that live in the house. Mm -hmm. um, are they you asking? Yeah, yeah, like are you asking them, you know, like what do you guys hear? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like what do you guys do? Like what's your, like, what's your plan? Like yeah, what are you the, 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 for those that, my guys that, that I ask them all the time. Mm -hmm. But they also ask me. But I'm the first to educate them on the fact that you can't be entitled in this situation. Right? So there never should be a time in which the talent, car is not full of gas, washed. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. No dishes in the sink, trash full. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Cups laying around. Because remove the pride. There's no reason why you should not have a job if you are in the ecosystem of an athlete. An athlete needs a barber, needs security, needs a driver, needs a babysitter. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Needs just a handyman. Now, if you equating that with being rich, well, that's a different dynamic. You're not getting rich. There's only one person getting rich in this whole equation here, yeah. and that's the player, yeah. right? So, but what is your value? Yeah, yeah, like what's your value? Yeah, like you can't be on the couch when he's getting ready to go to shoot around. That don't work. And if he's late to shoot around, that's your fault. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because when the bill come, you're not paying it. I done watched all y'all pay bills. You came by yourself. Mm -hmm. It's 25 meals on here. Ain't nobody with in their pocket. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I've never done that. Whose responsibility is it to explain that, though? Is it the player's responsibility to explain it to his homies, or is his homies' responsibility to fucking know that shit? Because it's, it's, it's a, a no-brainer. No, no, you, you can't, can't expect no one. It's a shared, okay. it's a shared conversation, but you can't, ex like he's saying, you can't expect the, the homie to know it. You can't expect him to know it. But what you can expect him to do is to think about it, Right? and identify it to the point to where it's saying, okay, look, man, I don't know what you want me to do, yes. but yes. <laughs> let me understand what my place is, therefore I know it, and I master that. Right. Or you have a situation like, like I had a, um, some one of my partners told me about a building that was available in Dallas, right? Good location, told me what he wanted to do with it, what I do. I go buy the bill. You bought it, yeah. Right? What they do. Nothing. Nothing. Just well, that's wanted. unfortunate. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, but, but, but that's... But that's what I'm saying. But that's, that's, that's unfortunate. But saying, here's the thing. Try to put it in the situation. You, I'm right. Saying, but and, you being... You having the capabilities to buy a building mm -hmm. and me identifying it don't make me an expert in real estate. Absolutely, but what your plan was, you what you came to me with a plan, right? Right. This is what I want to do with the building. Oh, thought about it, presented it to, great idea, whatever, let's do it, right? Come to you, okay, we're going to buy the building, this, that, <coughs> there. Right. Building just sat there. No execution. <laughs> no execution, you know what I'm saying? Like, and that's... Well, that's you know, unfortunate. Yeah, very, you know, know what I'm saying? That's, so, that, but, that's, but that's... that's, that's, that's that's taking your opportunity for granted. Exactly. To your that's point, you was But is that what yeah. makes you rare versus other agents that you know the players themselves? You understand their game. You understand their understand their mannerisms. I, I know. So that is that what makes you above the others? Because my agent, I, we used to argue every day. I used to call him just to argue. 
No, <laughs> no <laughs> shit. Oh, yo, yo. No What's my favorite shit. move? <laughs> oh, you don't know. Click. 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 <laughs> you didn't even watch it. What's my second move? You didn't even watch it. Click. But here's the thing, you know. Why do I need to know? I gave you the marketing advance. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> Why do I need to know? You know, I, I, I cut everybody in. Mm -hmm. So why do I need to know? Box score agent. Yeah. I'm a highlight agent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now, I know your favorite move. Mm -hmm. Watch it a thousand times. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I watch it in Arizona too. Mm -hmm. You understand <laughs> what I'm saying? But, but this is what we deal with. But again, we've created this environment in sports where we got a lot of people that aren't okay with just being good or being great at what they were born to do. So now I have to pretend to have all these other capabilities mm -hmm. because society has placed the dumb jock tag on athletes. Yeah. Right? So now I don't want to be considered a dumb jock. So now I have to put myself in this environment to where I'm doing a lot of fake business. Mm -hmm. Times, multiply that times, the ego, ecosystem placed around me, right? And it's, it's a recipe for disaster. And it's the reason why you see a lot of individual activity as it pertains to infrastructure and collaboration or the lack thereof collaboration. But if Geffen, Spielberg, and Katzenberg can do business, you mean to tell me pick three names out of a hat, can't? Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. right. So, but this is, the, this is the mentality. I watch it. And a guy like LJ, you know, he's gonna get the short end of the stick for a number of reasons. I've been a part of five generations of the NBA. But we can all be honest and know that there's always going to be competition amongst the players. That's just how it's always going to be. Mm -hmm. So when you have these conversations about who to go and who all this, you're not really going to get the real answer from anybody per se. Now, everybody's opinion, they entitled their own opinion. Mm -hmm. Everybody got their own opinion, and I'm, I'm fine with that. But then you got this TV component where... There's people on TV saying what they feel, but that's kind of tainted too. Because we all know the difference between Mike, LeBron, and Kobe. Mike and Kobe, they were, they didn't care if you were their friend or not. Matter of fact, they don't care to be your friend. <laughs> they don't want to speak to you, mm -hmm. period. But what does that do? That makes you want to be their friend even more. Mm. LJ, it's all inclusive, right? All inclusive. But familiarity breeds disrespect. Mm. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about that disrespect. Uh, Stephen A. Smith went on the podcast P Show recently. Cap. We're going to get there. Immediately. <laughs> Immediately. He, he had this to say uh, about when he told you he had LeBron at number two. As I got him as the second best player in the history of basketball. I got him ahead of Kareem. I got him behind no one but Jordan. And I said to Mr. Chirper himself, Chris Paul, I mean Rich Paul, my boy, and, and I said, you act like that's an insult. <laughs> this dude, it is an insult. I said, get the fuck out of my face. What? <laughs> get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> exactly what I said to him. Fuck. I don't want to talk to you no more. You can't talk to me about it. So, we got you here, so I need to know on the record, did Stephen A really tell you get get the fuck out of my face? So from you that really look, let me answer that question. <laughs> I just need to hear a cap one more time. Come on, man. Anybody in the world know me, he's not gonna say that to me. Yeah, first it, of all. That doesn't now, matter response. Now, if you wanna add context to it, because you know, Stephen A that's my guy. We have cordial conversation, but I'm not, you know, I'm I can debate all day long. So when you talk about <clears throat> There's no such thing as get the fuck out of my face. No. <laughs> now, <laughs> now you can say, oh man, get out of here. Let's just add context for the viewers, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. Okay, so we move on. Um, 
the reality of it is this. When you talk about number one versus number two, he's number one for him, you know, in the greatest of his time or our time in that perspective. Michael Jordan was my favorite player growing up. Mm -hmm. I've had every shoe ever made up to 14 when it started getting a little weird. Mm -hmm. but, <laughs> but at the end of the day, that was me, yep. right? That's all we had to compare to. We, there was nothing else. Yep. Mike transcended the game. When Kobe came, Kobe was a silhouette of Mike, mm -hmm. right? That's everything, which is great. But LeBron is the first player to have to deal with a 24-7, 365 news cycle of sports and opinions from those that's not even capable or carry the, the expertise to give a valid opinion, right? Mm -hmm. In addition to, no, I'm not going to really do it how y'all want me to do it. I'm probably going to do it how I decide to do it. We all know that don't go over well, right? And so then you have this, you have this environment this, and this sports society that's created, right? And, then you, and so now you have the root against. That's a whole other thing that Mike never had to deal with because his hardest critic was probably Peter Vesey. Yep. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Fucking Peter Vesey. But I just think LeBron's antlers is in platinum and Michael's may be in gold. Why? Because when you think about, he had to be compared to Mike. Who did Mike have to be compared to? Talk about it. Right? You talk about, oh, he lost this X amount of finals. Well, how many finals you been to? Two. How hard was it to get there? Extremely. <laughs> <laughs> How many finals you been to? Not a goddamn one. What about you? Why didn't you go? Hard. We talking about four guys, <clears throat> three lottery picks, a guy who a rule, the Gilbert Arenas rule is create, created for him because of him. You know? But then you gotta also Think about when LeBron came into the league. Yep. T Mac, <clears throat> Paul Pierce, AI, Kobe, you had all these guys. And we're talking about this kid. We just saw the clip of his teammates. Oh, he's gonna have to join the bandwagon. Uh -huh. Huh? And D Miles, my man. Mom was a sweetheart. D Miles took, you know, welcomed me with open arms. Can't blame him for that. Nah. He don't know what's getting ready to take place. Nobody did. You understand what I'm saying? Yep. But yet and still, this is what you get. So now, when you talk about the GOAT, okay, the man made a decision to go to Miami. Whether you like it or not, every kid today is saying what? I'm taking my talents too. It was just ahead of his time. It's okay for us to say that. He was the first social media athlete of anything. It's okay for us to say it was ahead of his time. Now. I never think it's an easy way to break up with anybody, especially your wife or, mm -hmm. you know, a franchise that drafted you from home. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe not necessarily the best decision optically, yep. but the thought and the intent of it was genuine from the heart, boys and girls, you know. But you talk about propaganda, so it's a different dynamic, right? Then we, the, the narrative of, Okay, well, I, you know, he went to Miami and, you know, they made him this way. What? Now, what, what did help was infrastructure, consistency, professionalism, which LeBron's always had. That's no question about that. But I'm saying overall, from a culture yep. perspective, right? Organization. Organization, yep. which was all great. But to create this narrative of, he needed somebody and they, you know, no, it's a shared need. Because mm -hmm. if I don't go there, they don't win. What are you talking about? <laughs> you, you get what I'm saying? Now, that's not coming, if, if you ask anybody in the Heat organization, 
at least me did, they'll tell you how much they appreciate it, still appreciate it. You get what I'm saying? But the narrative from the media perspective was something totally, totally different. So when you just get into that GOAT conversation, and I always say this, comparisons are the thief of joy. But Michael's a GOAT, no question about it. But LJ's a GOAT as well. He came in, $100 million contract. Think people like that? There hasn't been one since, and it won't be one. Right? Mm -hmm. It's a good segue for you, Joe. It won't be one. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Because shoe deals ain't what they used to be. But I'm just saying, when you talk about all the teammates around them that got paid, all the coaches that got paid, all the Lance Blanks, Chris Grant, Danny Ferry, um, you know, Wes Wilcox was there. He's a GM. Yep. You know, when you, when you just really break down oh, the, the impact, impact mm -hmm. right, how could you say that this man is not a GOAT? It doesn't even make sense. It's a different conversation. And when you talk about ratings, driving viewership. Jerseys. We know why you're having the conversation. Sometimes it'd be topic like, it ain't even worth talking about. Why y'all even talking about this? But it's ratings. We get it. It's a business. I understand that. But I'm not going to sit here and, and just say what you think I want to hear. Which, you know, we're going we're gonna to have a conversation about it. And I will have a conversation about it. So isn't, so, but isn't infrastructure and everything that you said about Miami, isn't that like, but that's like one of the biggest things for all of us, I think. Like, like with that, because I feel like even with you being an agent, your infrastructure yeah. and your consistency and everything is like the reason yeah, why the players come and things I, like that. So that is like one of the biggest things too. Yeah, I, I think that, I think that, you know, having the consistency, you know, Pat's been there forever, mm -hmm. you know. Andy Ellsberg, who is unbelievable, been there forever. Yeah. Adam Simon now there, been there. Spose, been there, mm -hmm. came through the ranks. That was, that was extremely valuable yeah. to a guy like LJ coming there because they want to win. Mm -hmm. They want to win, mm -hmm. and they want to win the right way, yeah. right? But it's not like he had to be babysat or handheld. You know, I'm yeah. just like, let's just fix the narrative. Yeah. I'm not discrediting yeah. because Miami is, if I have a player come out in the draft, if you can choose it, obviously, especially if you know they need San Antonio's always a great place to go. Miami's always a great place to go. You know, Sam Preston has done a great job in OKC. I'm talking about in terms mm -hmm. of just developing and getting the guy ready for yeah. the rest of his career. It's a great starting point in the league for those reasons. But I just like to get rid of that it's whole... It's not for everybody. Do you yeah. think that was the turning but point? it's not for everybody. That Miami, do you think that was a turning point or do you think when he came back to Cleveland, like he'd be like... No, I think... I think 07, taking Eric Snow and Ilgowskis and Sasha Pavlovich to the finals yeah, to the was the first, first, first time. That yeah, team was I think, trash. I think Storm, I'm not going to say all that. I'm I mean, not that, saying that. It was like, trash, was the, but they wasn't yeah. champion. No, I'm just they saying, wasn't going to the championship. At 22 good. years of age, he took the team to the, the finals. finals. Yeah. Yeah. Right? As yeah. the underdog. Always been the underdog. Mm -hmm. Every finals he ever played outside of 2012 and maybe 2011 was the underdog. Right? Um, for the most part. So that's, that was the turning point. 29 mm -hmm. straight against Detroit was the turning point. Yeah, yeah my, my bad. Yeah, I forgot that so game. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. the turning point. We, yeah. And what he did was now when he go back to Cleveland, they have to listen. You okay. Know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like, Let's talk about that. They have to listen now. That's what you know what I'm saying? Because he went there and won. Yeah. So now the team with what it was, how they put the team together in Miami. Mm -hmm. He come to Cleveland now. He understands okay. what it takes to win. Yeah. I need this guy, what they yeah. do. Yeah. I need this guy. I need this. But why? So, but why did that happen, so for, though? It's, it's winning because it works. In addition to, he on a one-year deal. Yeah, so. See? Now you got all of them, son, so. Well, I you can, got I, flexibility. I can lead this bitch any time. Yeah, hey, yeah. hey, yeah. hey, yeah, God damn it, I left once now, God damn it. <laughs> yeah. Try me if you want to. Try me in this bitch if you want to. Yeah. When you said nobody knew LeBron was coming, my dad did. I remember I got a call. He said, what you doing? I said, I just finished working out. He said, well, you might as well get back in the gym. <laughs> There's a kid in high school by the name of LeBron James. It's like a hurricane coming. Get ready. <laughs> Nobody, yeah. nobody's scared of no, no high school kid. Click. Yeah. 
Hey, hey. 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 Now, he called my guest. Yeah. He watched the Oak Hill. I oh, guess yeah, when the they Oak came, to, yeah, yeah, he yeah. watched the game. He yeah, said, no. "Yeah, there's a hurricane coming. You mean you might want to get back in that gym?" But like, oh, you damn. know, segue into your shoe deals. Just a different time now. Yeah, for sure. Hold on, before you get there, I got a big question though. The big question is why L.A. After going back to Cleveland, Business. doing what y'all did in Cleveland, what? prompted the move to L.A. at the time where L.A. was really struggling, right? Trying to get back on the map. Yeah. I see it as more of a business move, but also I think that was a turning point in his legacy to take it over the top. Um, kind of like what you said, you know, because in our conversation it was, you know, if anybody know him, he gets bored fast. Right, and so my conversation it was looking at the talent. Yep. At the time, they had Jesse had done a great job in the draft. Kuz, Brandon Ingram, Zoe, Josh Hart. The talent was young, but was there. Yep. If you're gonna leave Cleveland, where are you going? Right. I thought he was going to New York. At that time, it didn't make sense, but one and the same, I understand why you say that. You got family component, right? Man, I ain't moving nowhere. No, no matter where you go, I'm going to LA, so it don't matter yeah. to me wherever you go. <laughs> um, and so now, you know, it's just a matter of who climbs the mountaintop to come back down and have to climb the mountaintop again. Now, obviously, if you go here and win, you've been to three different destinations and you won three different places. No matter how many times you've been, you won. Different you can't conversation. Nobody, yeah. Different conversation. Yeah. So now we have to, you have to go here with a respect for the organization, the legacy, and all the championships and the players, whether they were key guys or not. There's a, a, a fraternity yeah. that comes with that. And at the same time, a will and a want and a drive to, to get back up this mountain. Yeah. You know, so when they did it in 2020, and again, you try to discredit the bubble, you're not discrediting the 99 Spurs. Low, low key. I do. Low sure. key. Low, low key. Yeah, low key. I forgot about that. Low key, we forgot about that. We're generation haters, so we can discredit anything. The end of Knicks got to the finals that year too? No, I'm just saying in terms of, I mean, no, it's, I it's, it's, Two goals, it's 10 players, same shot clock, like refs, what are we talking about? <laughs> different, di different atmosphere, though. Different atmosphere. Yeah, but... That helped the other but, team. But here's huh? what I'm saying. That helped the other team. That, that helped, that helped. No I mean, it's, I mean, no, it's no, no fans. No you see a Lil Wayne on the little yeah, thing right there? Yeah, everybody get cheered. But yeah, but what, there ain't no but, home court advantage. No Rihanna. What have fans ever done for you? Fans energy. bring it the energy. energy. You know, it make that, it make, you know... Yeah, but I don't think, I don't think that, I don't think that... We, Shit, if you... I, under I understand that a Tuesday night against Detroit. <laughs> For all the marbles, I don't understand that. It's, de it's different when Ron yeah. coming down dunking and the, and the fans and he doing that. That's the, and he yeah. see Denzel and all that. That feel different. So yo, he they can't turn your it. fans. Huh? So you, he can't turn your fans. You get the cheer. There's right no back. fans. There's no fans. You're so, hearing a loud. So Ron can't turn your fan base like he would do in an but, arena. But also, but I can fan turn. Base can't, you can't, can't turn. You ain't gonna turn the Lakers hey, fan base. Fan, bro. You ain't turning no Lakers <laughs> fan base, bro. Hey, <laughs> but our fan base can't make him miss free throws because we loud and we on his ass all night. But, but, no, not, but taking that, not even focusing on that. Right, right. If Steph wins in the bubble, do they discredit it? Yeah, you got no. to. No. No, they don't. We're still saying the same thing. No, we're saying it's a bubble ring. We're still no, saying it's a bubble ring. Because it's circumstantial. But you're one. But the media. We're talking about the, yes, the, the masses about the, that yeah. the, the most like people listen to. Exactly. They still yeah. getting the it's same thing. I mean, yeah, outside of, outside of LeBron and Steph, yes. They, they, it's just going to be like, okay, you. Because they're the best. They're two of the best. They're the only two that's going to get slandered. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Because I'm just saying, you know, no matter who would have won it, I just felt like under those, I was in the bubble. Mm -hmm. So under those circumstances, you getting up, you testing every day, you know, you haven't seen your family in 90 days, if you made it that far. And to me, it was harder because when you look at the two teams that went, we know what the heat culture brings, mm -hmm. right? And then you had to have leadership between Rondo, LeBron, AD. They had a, they had a very 
adult team once they got in there for the most part to that. be able to lock in and got to remember the distraction that happened in the bubble when they stopped playing. Yeah. You, you get what I'm saying? So to me, it's, it, it, it was just as difficult as any one of them because, I mean, when you, when you go over all the final series, we've seen some series that home court or no home court is 97 to 58. At the end of three. Like, <laughs> <laughs> shit, end of three. But you, you had to say something key, though. Adult team. But yeah, but that's what I'm that saying. Team. That's what I'm saying. It's like, that's what, you know, because everybody, whoever was favored to win it. Clippers. Clippers had a vet team. No, listen. That was, I, I said it then. If Clippers going to win a championship, it has to be in a bubble because <laughs> if they play the Lakers, the Lakers can't turn that home crowd. Yeah. So this is even floor. So if they go win, this is the time they can win. Other than that, they never win the championship again. So let's talk about just this new CBA and from a player representative perspective, what are some of the things that concern you the most about the new CBA? How do players actually feel about it? For the players that's actually educated on it, I mean, first of all, the CBA is something that you have to be brought up to speed on on a daily. You know, it's just a very um, complex thing. Um, I would say, for me, just the state of the league and where it's going, you're starting to see, again, the half and the half knots. You know, you st you're not going to see this three guy, three, you know, three max deals to one guy going forward. Like you're going to really have to play at an elite level to, because the numbers are so high, right? You've seen less and less players this summer make. An annual 20 million a year. Mm -hmm. You're seeing the mid level get split in two now and not giving it to just one, mm -hmm. right? Unless you're the 20 million dollar player that they're getting for 12. You feel what I'm saying? And so I just think that you see a lot of guys working on their game, but they better start working on their approach. Mm -hmm. They better start working on their professionalism, you know, because. When the shit get bigger than the cat, they get rid of the cat faster mm -hmm. than ever before. Explain the approach, though. Like, because a lot of players, it was explained to me, play the game, shot. Play the game. But then I ask, what the fuck is the game? Well, you know, the game. No, I don't. Explain the game. What's the... Because well, a lot of guys want to be the professional, come to the arena and know what to say, know how to do it, know how to carry yourself, but haven't been taught what that approach particularly mm -hmm. is. Well, I can tell you, because I told KJ to do ex the opposite of what I did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do the opposite of what I did. <laughs> I'm saying, like, I was professional. Like, in that manner, what you just said, I show up on time, I speak to everybody, I show up and do my you job. thought that was enough. No, 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 that's just who I was, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I realized post-career, now he in it, what, it started, what I started seeing when I got older and moved on to other organizations and how things were portrayed. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah I so just, me telling him, I mean, because me telling him exactly what to do, like, be professional in these ways, do these things, mm -hmm. don't do these. Like, I was able to do that because I didn't Explain do that. Explain what the you know game I mean? is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Me yeah. telling him those things. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, I think. Because I was a vet in it, and you've been around enough to be able to relay that, you know what I'm saying? Because you've been around vets sure. and you know what it is, and you've been in these situations to be able to tell a young guy exactly that. I think the hardest thing, though, you got to remember, life in the NBA is a pyramid, mm -hmm. right? And so when you're in the sixth grade, you down here, everybody good, right? But as you keep going, you get to that 450, and then within that 450, you get to that 150. It's just a different dynamic. But that doesn't take away the habits you've built along the way, mm -hmm. right? Psychologically, how you feel. Because everybody in the NBA was the best player on their high school team at some point mm -hmm. or the AAU team at some mm -hmm. point. That never goes away, yep. right? Just like if I was a McDonald's All-American and I was 12 on the mock draft, I always feel like I was 12 and should have went 12. Even though if I went 38, somebody was tripping. You, you feel what I'm saying? Yep. And so you carry that energy into the organization. But you have to be able to, I, the, the difference in today's league, 
you have to be able to identify your role sooner yeah, yes. than ever before, yes. right? You don't get three years to figure it out or four years to figure it out. You need to be understood. Coming out of year one, you have to know what my role is and what I need to be doing, what I'm working on this summer, where I'm working on it at, right? And going into year two, applying that. Because you may not even get a year three mm -hmm. if you don't. And so when, you, when I talk about the approach, you know, we see a lot of guys that's probably not on rosters. It's not because of their talent. Because GMs are asking themselves today, okay, if I sign this guy, what does that mean for the culture of my locker room? Mm, locker room guys. Period. No matter who you've been, that's the conversation right now. And if there's mm -hmm. no pressure coming from ownership to sign you, then they don't need to do that. Because the one thing I don't want to do is, I'm not coming to work for you to make my job hard mm -hmm. when it don't have to be. But on the flip side, if you're in year 12, and yeah, I still got a little talent left in the tank, but I see where it's going, right at that point, I got to switch my game. Mm -hmm. I got to start becoming more of a energy provider, educating guys, yeah. you know, being that type of added value. So now, when I'm a third guy in my position, but they paying me 3.1, 2.8, whatever it is, to be on the roster, I'm bringing value. Yep. Jared Dudley mastered it. Mm -hmm. Team asset. Right? He mastered it. Yep. Which then led to him be getting a coach's gig and he's probably going to be a head coach. But going back to that key word, ego. Mm. Can I put my ego to the side to be a professional in my approach to allow myself to be positioned here and going forward. Everybody want their name in lights. We at Gills Arena. Mm -hmm. Everybody want their name in lights. But you can't have it both ways. Right. And so it don't matter what you're doing in the summer runs. It don't matter what you, how much weight you're losing. That stuff don't matter because the opportunity is not going to be there. I don't care who represents you. Right. It's not going to be there. Right? Now, a couple of years ago, I was able. Tristan just got on the Lakers this year. But you got to remember, you can't find a teammate or a GM to say Tristan was a bad teammate. Mm -hmm. Or bad, you know, you can't, you can't find him in the league. We, ain't, we can't talk about others. Just talk about you can't find him in the league. Now, on top of that, we bring some bigs in. And he's in tip-top shape. Yep. So now, oh, that's three boxes checked. Yeah, approach. <laughs> right. Readiness. So now, let's go check with the top dogs and see, hey, does this make sense? Of course, we was at the workout too. Mm. Everybody thinks, you know, I'm not going to be in his representation. I'm not going to just take the credit for that because it was, it could be been any team, mm. but he was prepared for the opportunity, right. you, you get what I'm saying? And so I think that guys gotta start having more of that sooner rather than later. So it's the entitlement that kills us, because like, just like what he was just saying, like he knew Entitle. things now that we didn't know then because yeah. we were entitled yeah. to the position yeah. based on where we were drafted, how we felt coming in, like Kyle, yeah. I came off a championship, mm -hmm. he number one pick, you know, he had to work for his, so his, his entitlement was, I'm working harder than everybody else. And me, it's like, I'm a champion. Like, then the approach is got to be different yeah. because they're not looking at us from a what you've done in the past mm -hmm. prediction. It's like, nah, what can you, how much of an asset you can you fit be? Our current infrastructure and our future mm -hmm. infrastructure, right? And so... What Gil had, he was the underdog. So when he became the top dog, that underdog was his foundation. It never left. Right. So his, 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 it was, he, he, because, you know, it's like being broke. If you was, grew up poor <laughs> and you get some money, no matter, you may not have as much as I used to have, but I ain't about to, I'm ain't not going to. Right. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that's, that's the mentality you're going to carry. And so for all my guys, uh, we, we, we really have these, these conversations. And it's go, again, it's just going to be harder 
to get that max deal mm. three times in a row consistently. You know, it's tough. You're going to have to really play at that level. Now, you can get it. You're going to get the first one, yeah. second one, but that third one, and even that second one. But, I'm, but again, you may not be making 76, but maybe you're making 40. Still yeah. a lot of money. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. But again, <laughs> it's yeah. the ego. And that word max, see, I think that we should remove that word. Because mm. that drives them for the entitlement. Yeah, and not only that, it also causes friction amongst every other thing because now not only you're entitled around the organization, you feel like I should be on the same wavelength as somebody else mm -hmm. because we're max yeah. players. But That's just not. like in the yeah. hood. You got a cutlass, <clears throat> I got a cutlass. They both on datings. We the same. Right. No, we're not. We not the same. Right? You live with your mom, I got a house. Got you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Just, but, 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 but that's the, that, that's the comparison. That's, Dude, them that's shits the even got leather. That's the dynamic. You know, that's what, that's, what, that's what you deal with. So it's hard. It's hard to really educate, man. It, 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 it really is. But, you know, like, I yeah. see it. I got a stock room of film on all this stuff. Yeah. But there's very few people that ask about it. Yeah, and I got to. Uh, but I don't mean to cut you off, but, but that's why, like, when KJ came out, I just, because that's the only thing I have to reference in this conversation, right? The guys looked at him like, nigga, how old are you again? Like, he, like, tell him, like, you, nah, you older than that, bro. Like, he met somebody that they, like, because he cared because he's been around men, been around in this situation, and, and we've had these conversations that Rich had. Has, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. with these guys. And, I mean, you had a conversation yeah, about KJ. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and then just because I'm, it's a daily thing, you know what I'm saying? It ain't a, I'm in town, especially let's go to him. dinner. Especially I ain't in town, for, let's go to dinner. Especially for him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because, again, and me and you had the conversation. Absolutely. You came to me at the game. Yeah. And out of my respect for Kenya, I'm like, well, I don't want to be put in a position where if he come with me, now there's an expectation for him to go a certain place, and then it ruins our relationship, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Because we know that, it, like, it, and so I was like, I didn't want to do that. But in watching him, watching him play, again, he's one of those guys to where he can bring so much value to a team, and he don't even have to score the ball. Yeah. Right. He don't even have to score the ball. Who? You, you get what I'm saying? And so, as long as he understand that and can get in the right crack. He can he can squeeze a twelve year career out, yeah. you know, and be just fine. Yeah, because yeah. he gonna do all the, and, and just doing all the other stuff. And where the money's going, yeah. shit, probably make damn near as much as you made. <laughs> gonna yeah. make more, shit. You know, yeah. like it's, it's it's it, that's just that's just how it is. The game has evolved. Yo, yeah, I was taught it the easier way um, from the owner. He said, um, uh, "A Poland." He said, um, "This is my uh, this is my wallet. Give me a reason to sign you this check." So when you think about it like that, that's attitude, professionalism, work ethic. All, give me a reason to write this check. Now, now when you think about talking back to the coach, coming late, th that keeps the checkbook closed. Yep. So I tell every player, I tell my son all the time, give me a reason to give you this money. It's my money. Right? You, you asking, like you saying, this is what I'm worth. No, you're worth what I write. Damn. You're worth what I write. If, if you're worth 200 and I write 200, you're worth 200. If you say I want 200 and I give you 150 and you take it, you're worth 150. Give me a reason to write this check. And that's how I tell every player and to the, approach anything. And the thing about it is, especially when the talent starts to dwindle. Mm -hmm. See, when the talent is there, they tolerate mm -hmm. all of that. Yeah, but what you don't realize, too, is I'm the guy on this team. There's an infrastructure. Based upon how I conduct myself on this team when I'm the man, mm -hmm. will have a direct correlation to what opportunities I get when I'm not the man. Because the assistant GM, the video coordinator, whomever, on this team when I was the man, treating people a certain way, acting out, coming late, mm -hmm. et cetera, they're now the GM, Somewhere the president, else somewhere else. So now when my talent has dwindled, it's still, still there a little bit, but I'm not as sought after, but I'm still able to play. But 
they've seen me in an environment and in an element that's not conducive to how they want their organizations to run, mm -hmm. and this is their first opportunity. Mm -hmm. They don't have the ability, like a Pat Riley or a Pop, to be able to say, no, this is who I want, and deal with it, because mm -hmm. they ain't going nowhere, their job's secure. They don't have that. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to take a chance on you, because I know you. Mm -hmm. I've seen you no matter what. I see you when it matter most. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And guys don't understand that. And that's what we got to try to get them to understand years three to five. Yeah. You know, like, come on, bro, because now in year nine, 10, 11, it comes back around. The NBA is just a kid. Some new guys in, but for the most part, it's not. It's the same, same guys, you know, pretty much. They might not be here no more and be here. They go over here and they're here. They go back down, back up, you know, yeah. that's how it goes. Same thing with coaches as well. Now in free agency, they pick up the phone. Hey, man, you had such and such. How was he? Shh, bro. Yeah. You ain't got to say it, man. Okay, cool. I'll call you. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's that type of environment. So at yeah, what point buddy. does the player stop trying to prove himself and accept the role that is being identified? Cause that's the toughest part for a player. Yeah, it's individual. Cause you trying yeah, to prove that you can yeah. play, you trying to prove that you deserve that thing, or you stand next to this guy over here. Well, so, I, you can't. You, it's individual. You, you can't. Yeah, it's. I think it's. It's individual based. It's based upon every every scenario is different. It's right? a time frame though, like year six, year seven. If you can last ten, at what? But who point, am I in the pecking order? If you you second, you ain't oh. the top. You ain't the top guy. Well, then, then in that case, the then it's year guy. one. You oh, used to be the top guy. You used to guy. be the top right. guy. And then it's like you move down, but you're still trying to prove nah, that well, you deserve something. I think you get a five-year window max of being the top guy before you, you know, like, and within that five years, you, you know, it's like playing a video game. Mm -hmm. If I beat this board, I get two more years of being, like, yeah, you, you yeah. know, you have to continue to show and prove that you're worthy of being that top guy. Once you know that that's not there, then, you know, when we was kids, you got to find somewhere to sleep. Follow you up. find your spot, lay down. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, what you, that's what you have to do. That just, that's, so the free agents yeah. that come into the situation, <laughs> they're looking at, you know, where do I fall in with this team? Like a John Wall, West, Russell Westbrook. These are guys yeah. who've been guys, but then it's like you come into these situations. I don't want to put Melo in that situation, but it's well, kind of like when the guy has humbled himself. If they're humble, yeah, that, I'm I mean, saying, that's but, that's but, not but, easy. But, but, but if the guy has humbled, and that's why conversations are necessary to yeah, have. Yeah, conversations. You know and it's all situations. If the guy has humbled himself, and but the opportunity doesn't present him to show that I yeah. that I'm humble. Right. It creates like that, just the take a, no, just take a Melo for instance. Melo was given an opportunity to show you that I'm humbled in this manner. Yeah. I, I appreciate the opportunity to come out and hoop. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. After being out. After so being well, out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That was the humbling yeah. Yeah. of it. You know what I'm saying? And I think Russell. Like, that's had like because well. they used the interview against him yeah. and he was like, they said I'm gonna come off the bench, PI. Like, so it's it's that. Right. Why would I want that? But then it's like, then he don't get a job. It's like, see, that's why. Right. Now he get to Portland, it's like. The perception. But I was yeah, so glad. That, I was you know so glad Melo did get the second opportunity yeah, because I know all guys want to go out on their own dime. You know. Yeah. And, and but again, I think again, guys just get a bad rap because like in Russ's case, I'm there. We we all know the type of person Russ is. Mm -hmm. Heart big as his room. So you, you know you play on this team and it is what it is. The wins and losses creates these different things, but that's not necessarily what's what's reality, right. you know, and so. The perception. Yeah, yeah because he just, took it back, the man took it back. He, I go come off the bench. He could have easily been like, nah, fuck that. Yeah. Like, I'm not yeah. MVP, I'm this, I'm that, but I, this is, okay, this is what y'all asking of me. Yeah, no, of course. All right, cool, but I'm, I'm still hooping and I know what Yeah, well, you can't is. stop me from being me can't on still, the floor. Absolutely, like so when I'm out there, I'm out there, that's my, what I'm gonna my, do. My determination. Absolutely, so. We all gotta, we all gotta, pay homage to somebody's determination Absolutely. and drive, especially after making a gazillion. It ain't about the money. Not at all. You want I love move, this man. game. And that's admirable. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Let's talk about just the state of shoe deals going around the league. You mentioned LeBron earlier coming in with that 100 mil. Not quite seeing as much of that nowadays. So where do you think shoe deals are headed for, for big time athletes moving forward? Well, the shoe business has changed. You know, I think, and again, 
this going back to ego, right? We all grew up, we want our own shoe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've had it, right? <laughs> but what's the, sense of my, what's the sense of me having my own shoe if I can't build a business from it? Ooh. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? Mm. Like, let's not get confused. Mm. The signature shoe comes or should come with the signature business, right? Because that's the, why contracts is done the way they're done. That's why you get royalties, so on and so forth. If we don't have that, now we're going back to the ego. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now, I don't want a signature shoe today. You couldn't pay me to have a signature shoe today because kids today, they don't necessarily have what we had. There was a loyalty to a brand and you had to, kids today don't have to have that. They wear slides, they wear Crocs, they wear Uggs, they wear Vans. Anything they want to wear. Mm -hmm. The basketball shoe is no longer the lifestyle shoe. Yeah. The lifestyle shoe is a lifestyle shoe. When we were coming up, we wore the basketball shoe skating, <laughs> we wore it to dinner, mm -hmm. to church, we played in it, had to have it on at school, and this whole idea of having um, not being accessible, that was not true. The reason why we wanted that specific shoe is because 90% of the school had it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, now it's 9% of the school has it. So when you think about that, where does that leave the business? Most shoes sell based upon price point today, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And Resale. kids are wearing them in the game. When you see them off the court, they're in their hand, they don't have them on. Yep. So now, what does that do to the business? Nobody's really building a signature shoe business that hasn't already built it, right? There's some that's already been built, they, that's, they, in the, they in the system, it is what it is, and the way it works with retailers, we all know, if you want this song, you gotta, you gotta play this song too. You yeah. know, that's how it goes, and so, we're not seeing as agents, we're not seeing those. It used to be, if I got a top five pick, mm -hmm. me, if I got a top five pick, early on in the career, that person was getting well over a million, sometimes $2 million a year, depends. This is, this is early 2000, like, you know, 07, 08, mm -hmm. Then when you got into 17, 16, uh, you know, it, it changed a little bit. The number one pick, yeah, he getting about five million. Yeah. But then it dropped, right, to 700,000, a million. But now it's dropped even further, right? And the shoe companies also, the basketball shoe deals come from a sports marketing budget. It doesn't just, but now, if I'm a brand, I don't have to wait for Gilbert to play Tuesday night on TNT. I can give it to Josiah because you on, your, you on your social media all day, every day, right? That's the difference between Lethal Shooter having a deal and a player coming out in the draft at 25 having a merch bonus deal. Yep. Mm -hmm. The money's just not there. Yep. And nor do they want it to be because you got to deal with everybody from, you know, um, the Jack Harlow's and Billy Eilish and you know, Travis Scott and, and you know it's yeah. just a different time now. <clears throat> and so when you're going into this, a lot of shoe deals that's being announced, it's a lot of fluff, a lot of yeast on those deals mm. because shoe deals are pay per play. By the way, you get prorated. Oh, per game. It says you have to play a minimum of this amount of games. If you play under that. There's a proration that starts. Mm -hmm. If you miss a full season, it's not like the NBA. It's not like... It ain't like, guaranteed. It ain't guaranteed. You understand what I'm saying? So, so well, people hear like they like these so-called lifetime deals. Like, what a... Cap. <laughs> <laughs> lifetime deals mean that you still got to... I'm saying still you still a brand. Here, so you got a brand product. forever. No, you like, still that's, yeah, that no, you got, they're going to yeah, send but, you merch forever. There's going to be very few people who get a lifetime deal. Absolutely. And if they did, yeah. they've had an existing business at that brand yeah. for 12, 13, 14, 50, 15 years and, then, and beyond. Uh, got you. you know, Ken Griffey yeah. is never announced. He has a life, okay. he's lifetime with Nike. We know Derek Jeter, we know that logo. GP. I don't know. I mean, those, that but, logo, but that Griffey logo is something. Some things. from an ambassador perspective where we're just making sure that you're in the system, mm -hmm. where we're giving you product, 
some actually still getting a royalty, still getting a check. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, yeah. there's, you know, I don't know people's business, but I'm just but telling they're you. They're still getting a check. That's, because that's, that's two different Both situations. Type shit. Exactly, yeah. but. Mm -hmm. You know, it's two different situations. Whole campaign behind it. So oh, you talked about player shoe deal, and I was talking about about your shoe deal. We see you with the clutch, see you with the fit. Yeah, strip, all this that is good separate stuff. from my shoe deal, but yeah. But I'm just saying. So let's talk to me a little about clutch athletics and what you got going on there, and then also the shoe deal as well. Well, yeah. So you know, if anybody knows me, my brand's always racing, um, and having the ability to build a brand that is globally recognized. That's why I never named it Rich Paul Sports, mm. you know, because I didn't want to make it about me. I wanted to be able to grow legs. Um, but what happened was, you know, I was just able to, you know, be creative and felt like the, there was an opportunity, there was a white space in the market for bringing a, a, a apparel, biz, apparel, sports performance, apparel line with style that is affordable, accessible, cool, and back into the community. Because when we grew up, you can get the best stuff at the corner, mm -hmm. right? Now you got to go through all these yeah. hoops to, to get things and so that's what really gave me the original idea totally separate from the representation business they not they don't cross right and so I can go out and I can sign if the other rep representation can get past the name and really do the best deal for their client I can sign I have a checkbook I can sign players that's not even with the representation side of my business which is great but that's going to take the ego, vision. Put the ego you, aside. Gonna take, do it. Yeah. Gonna take, yeah. The other going to put the ego, ego aside. Yeah. That's going to take, that ego take aside. a little envy being out the way. But, but if you're doing what's best for your client, it, it is what it is. So, so would but, you, have you went out so would, would you approach somebody or would they have to oh, come would, to you? Oh, I would, yeah. For the, for the, yeah would they have the to right. come to you with it? No, I would approach it. I mean, yeah. the check is a check. If I can, if I can you know, give a better opportunity, yeah. you got to decide and your client has to decide what's best for them. Absolutely. I have yet to do it. Yeah. Uh, but, <laughs> but I, I, you know, that's, I that's coming. You haven't found a but, player that's worthy yet? Yeah, because, but ultimately, though, you don't necessarily need the player either. Absolutely. Because awesome. the difference is, when you think of the name, you automatically think of the world's best athletes anyway. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And I'm going back into the community, and I partnered with New Balance because I felt like, you know, having that partner and being able to press a button and be global tomorrow based upon their, their, database and manufacturing distribution and, and just their expertise in, in having this existing brand since 1972, I felt like the growth opportunity with New Balance was great, was great to have. So that's been great. We're in 100 stores. We're going to another 120 stores uh, next year, um, which, is, which is great. Um, and then prior to that, I just felt like, you know, just something cool to do was to have a CEO have a shoe. Why can't I have a mm -hmm. shoe, you know? <laughs> CEOs like to be cool. I'm not wearing a suit to work every day, you know, and so I didn't expect it to go the way it went, though. You know, last, I think the year and a half ago, we did 10,000 pairs. They sold out in 10 minutes. This last, this last um, capsule I did uh, around Forever Yours, I did the creative, came up with the color scheme, the, the commercial, all that whole idea, the love letter on the basketball, just playing on the love for the game, but also it could be the love for her, yeah. you know, and... And there's more people look like you than us. I'm saying there's more people your, like that's yeah. gonna be yeah. you than us. You and I just saying? think, so. you know, style and simplicity is the way to go mm -hmm. right now. You know, people aren't really, you're not really trying to, you don't care about pumping it up or having a big airbag on the bottom of your <laughs> shoe and, and dunking, you know, <laughs> at Starbucks. You know, you're just trying to really get out, go to Whole Foods, mm -hmm. look cool and be yeah. done with it. So that's just, you know, this whole fashion thing and, and just, um, when you talk about brands and things like that, it's it's it goes in, in, into a circle. But I wanted Shit, to I be at thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> Two thirteen. You got you got to hit Georgia. Too. Yeah. You don't know Georgia, but you'll get to know her. But, oh, already. <laughs> but, um, Georgia. <laughs> but yeah, but that's 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 been great. And then you know just continuing to just evolve, man. Like you know, I think oftentimes, like we talked about this earlier with the athlete, I understand who I am, right? And I understand what my capabilities are and my foundation. I know there's this idea of, oh, well, Rich wants to leave and own I do not want to own a team. I don't plan on owning a team, don't want to own a team. If LeBron buys a team, I do own a team, which is great. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's all love. The access, all the stuff, the perks of ownership, I'm pretty sure I will have 
if he was able to get a team or if any other of my friends get a team, I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure I would have that. But as far as me and my position, I love what I do. Um, you know, does, could it be a thankless job some days? Yeah, but that's anything in life, right? You're gonna have the ups and downs of it, but the core and my excitement for helping guys grow is what my focus is today. Not just on the court, but also off the court. I've been through it all, you know, as a kid, my adult life, and then obviously my professional life. And so being able to give that back is, is, is my example of passing out turkeys and stuff like that. That's mm -hmm. my pay it forward, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but it's coming from a place of, you know, it's, there's some substance there, there's integrity there. And, so I've been excited about that, but I'm not stopping, you know. Obviously, that's, that's one, two, three things, but ultimately, um, I don't want to feel boxed in, but I'm also keeping the main thing the main thing, so. Yo, so one, one last question. So are you the greatest NBA, NBA agent ever, or yes. just a agent ever? Yes. <laughs> I respect it, like. You know, you. I remember seeing you in the airport with Johnny Flynn, and I remember when I said Sacramento. that. Yeah, Sacramento. Yeah, Sacramento. I said that about uh, Ricky Rubio. Remember, he was just like, ah, <laughs> like you know, ah, they like they gonna get you on that one. Um, but just seeing you, like since then, like you know, you've always been with your players. I've always heard things about you knocking on guys' doors, getting them up early, um, trying to get them to you know their workouts or things like that. Like you said, carrying a bag and things like that. Um, but I just respect the steps the steps that you took, um, you know, where, where you came from and where you are now. Um, and like you said, it is envy for a lot of us, like, because a lot of us have been taught and we're, we're taught to be against each other mm -hmm. and things like that. So um, to me, I respect it. No, I, I agree with that. And, and, but, it, but it also comes from a place of care, yeah. right? I just felt like when a lot of guys was coming up and still today, we don't throw this word family around in our internal office because it's cliche and it's fake. We know that um, amongst the others. But like you said, you didn't, I don't have to represent you to give you the game mm -hmm. or to, yeah, to I'm, pull I'm you to the that. side yeah. about And I remember you coming out of the stands you know, because you didn't know if you was going mm -hmm. where you was going. You mm -hmm. feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so, but I was also happy for you. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Because you, you earned that. Mm -hmm. But again, it's, it's one of those things where I've been around the game so long and I've seen so many people come and go. And we used to get laughed at. You know, there were several players, guys that laughed at myself and Maverick, right, about our approach to things or saying that we were, you know, riding somebody's jock or whatever the case may be. It wasn't that. We're just trying to present ourselves the right way, but also represent somebody who's giving us an opportunity and a platform the right way. Because one thing about the athlete, if you a brother, a sister, a cousin, a friend, whatever the case may be, anybody outside of mom and dad, you're not entitled to anything, mm -hmm. right? Anything. Mm -hmm. But what you should be wanting and willing to do is everything to make and allow the player and the talent to only have to focus on their job. Yep. That's it. Yep. And there's no pride that comes with that. If that means going to pick up the fries with sauce, hopefully you're not doing that because you're on a diet <laughs> not type. But whatever that means, you should be willing to do that. And it's on the athlete to not treat them as if they are below them. You know, the below hill. them, right? Mm -hmm. and really show appreciation for the little things that people do for you to make your life that much easier. This spills over to your better half and so on and so forth mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it ain't nothing wrong with you not working mm -hmm. if you're making my life easier to go out and do my job to the best of my ability. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I have to worry about 10 other things and I got to beat the Bucks on Tuesday night. Yeah. That's just too hard of a job. I can't, yeah. I can't do it. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So I always had that approach. And from the day I got an opportunity in 2003, there was no, the conversation that was had with me is, mm -hmm. there's no real job for you. There's no real position for you. I don't know when it's going to be one. 
for you, but all I know is since you've been around me, you kept it real. I've learned a lot and I gotta have you around me. It was up to me you to cry. create value yeah. for myself, mm -hmm. yeah. right? And from that point on, I was, I was in, a, in, a, in a rush to get off the payroll, because I don't come from that. Right, yeah. Anybody know me? No, I don't, like, I don't, I don't come from that. You, yeah, you say it took you two years, right? It took me two years. Involved. I never, you know, I never stood in, at the mall to get jeans or have to wait for somebody else to get something. If, you know, if Gil bought a Maybach, I bought one too, you know what I'm saying? Like, that, mm -hmm. that was my mentality, but mm -hmm. I also understood there's a role to play. Mm -hmm. And my dad, because I saw some of your questions, but my dad instilled that in me, right? Okay. Always have to lead with respect for others, yeah. right? Always have to do things with integrity and with moral principle, because the principle of things have left. The way our league is changing, is the, you know, there's no more G-code. The G-code is gone. Oh, gee, yeah, no. mm -hmm. It's just gone. And I think that it's ultimately going to be to our demise because where's the, where's the, the guardrails, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. When the technology came and there was no more people on the corner, what, what the news said the corner was and what it was for me was two different things. My corner was Harvard, was Penn, was Michigan. Mm -hmm. Whatever they thought their corner was, was what it was. And don't get me wrong, <clears throat> there's things that went wrong and there's things that went right. But I learned so much because that guy who looks like a wine head today, he had a family. Mm -hmm. He had a Cadillac hanging out the driveway. You know, he had a job at Ford. Mm -hmm. He lost it. But that's to my value. Learning his experience and what he did right and wrong and adding that to my going forward in life, saved my life in a lot of ways, helped me make better decisions in a lot of ways. It didn't come from professors, you know, snardugu class mm -hmm. at whatever. It didn't come from that. You, you understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when you read the book, Lucky Me, it's not a puff piece. It's not a look at what I did. I'm not into look at what I did, yeah. right? Because I've been doing for a long time. And when you practice doing things the right way, they become routine. I don't have to show that. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't have to tell that. That yeah. just comes with the energy. And so I carry a different flag as an agent, and I want to be able to say to the next guy, man, I like your style. I like how you're doing it. And I want him to be able to say to me, man, I appreciate you because when it was on you to give it, you actually gave it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and I'm not trying to necessarily... I don't see nobody as competition. I really don't. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, and I say that, and I'm not gonna use the word humble. I say that graciously. I say that with a lot of grace because I just feel like we're on two different wavelengths. Mm -hmm. If a player's signing with me, it's not, as much as it's about a contract, it's also about him understanding that I got somebody that I can lock in with that's bringing value all the time, and a friend, and a confidant, you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's not just about a financial gain. If I work, you work, I want to be paid. Mm -hmm. Why shouldn't I want to be paid? Mm -hmm. You know, when I first started my company, everyone tried to act like somebody owned a piece of my mm -hmm. business. Or, mm -hmm. You know, that's all discouragement. But they didn't say it to Arn. They didn't say it to David. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? They didn't say it to Jeff. They didn't say it to those guys. Right? Mm -hmm. But... We all know what, what takes place in business. In business, you need somebody to help you down the road. This DIY kit that these guys got out, it ain't happening. I don't care how many camera setups you got following you around to the fashion shows and all that. It's, it's, it don't matter, right? It, it's appeasing you. It's you, you know, digesting your own ego, but there's no compounding there, mm. right? The guys that's really getting to it, they're compounding yep. wealth. And that's, and, but we, as young black men, we've always thought to conquer, right? And when you think about conquering, it always comes with a very cannibalistic approach, right? And if I have a cannibalistic approach, then how can we collaborate? Man. We can't. Man. And if we can't collaborate, 
then how are we ever going to build a community? Mm. We're not. Mm. We're not. So this is the game that's being played, right? Well, Arch rivals. Yeah, I, I got that. something for you, though. Mm -hmm. Flowers. Yeah. Since 03, 04, I've seen you come through. The hustle, perseverance, really never ever really piggybacking off of what everyone thinks got you here. I seen and had the conversations with you and Maverick, right? When I was in college, the things that kind of shaped me to be a professional, what to wear, how to wear, what to say, how to say, you know. That's why I asked you the question about what you would do back then if you was an agent, because someone like me would have needed this type of energy. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to give you your flowers and understanding that where you are now is never going to be overlooked from somebody who watched it happen. You know what I'm saying? To sit back and see you and Brian, you know, year 20, be like, God damn, I know them. Right, I appreciate I seen that. Yeah. I watched it, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, regardless of how people feel about, you know, him, you, Maverick, Mm -hmm. The grind, the hustle, I've seen it. I, I've had the conversations with y'all, and I've and I seen that it, it, it was manifested. It was all hard work, you know, no favors. And I just want to show the appreciation and that it's never going to go overlooked. And I appreciate that. And when you went opposite from where we was at, I didn't switch up. No, for sure. Me and your relationship was the same. For sure. You know? And that's how it, that's how it should be. Mm -hmm. No doubt. You know? So... This was fun, man. Yeah. I got to come back, Gil. I got gotta you. Invite me back. <laughs> you know, I did bring some, some, some product. We yeah. got it. Okay. <laughs> we got product. I brought some product for you. We got some product. Okay, great. I like product. I like no product. <laughs> you got no product. product. I ain't got no product. <laughs> Let's wrap this thing up, man. Uh, we, we'll bring the product in. Yeah. But Rich, we appreciate you taking the time, pulling up. You got your book, uh, Lucky Me, coming out this yeah, fall. October 10th. In a little October bit, oh, October 10th, Lucky Me coming out, hitting shelves. But a little advice for you, if you're going to uh, stake out in the neighborhood for Gil's son, if the ball head security guard's working up front, that nigga's a hater. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just letting you know right now, he's going to jam you up. And all those security guards that watch the show that yeah. aren't him, don't show this nigga the clip because he's a major <laughs> hater. But why, we on, why, why he don't get no glasses? Yo, he be looking at that screen, we check in, he can barely see this. I be like, homie. <laughs> Listen, it's I like, me. They make I like them. that for you, Gil. Yeah, yeah. We get two of them in there, yeah. It's, uh, but them just them. all the other ones are cool. The black dude's cool. Always <laughs> tap up love. Just the bald head dude with the squinty. Like, yeah. like nigga, it's the same my nigga. Favorite, like, so I hate on the squint. Are you like bro with you? Fuck with me, bro. He, he bro with the, uh, the king. He knows crown. my name. Hey, the crown. Go ahead. Boris, we appreciate you pulling up, man. Nah, I can say you. Lucky Me in stories October 10th. This has been another episode of Gil Arena. We out. With the honor call for greatness, the chosen a few that carry the gift of genius. Who do what they do? Who possess finesse the blessed with desire? It's true. I'ma say it loud, none other than who?